So now let's talk a little bit more about the tropics. This is kind of the main talking point. So we're going to talk about everything that you need to know with these specific storms and areas of development. There's only one of each, but first things first, Hurricane Aaron it did form as of late last week into a tropical storm. And between Saturday and Sunday, it rapidly intensified from about a category two hurricane very quickly into a category five before we knew it. So Aaron underwent what we call an eye wall replacement cycle, which, which is just where exactly what it sounds like. Actually, the eye wall kind of tried to replace itself. So that's where your heaviest bands of rain are going to be your gustiest winds. And as it underwent that, it does lead to a little bit of weakening within a tropical system. So Aaron went from a category five down to a category three, but now it has re-intensified as of late last night into a, a category four hurricane, excuse me, 130 mile per hour winds, which is like the bottom of the threshold for winds in order to classify as a category four. So high in category three, low in category four, whatever number you see by this, the main thing that I wanna tell you is that we will see Aaron maintain major hurricane status, category three or higher over the next two days. So you see the timestamps here by the time we go into the overnight hours tonight, maybe finally weakening into a category three storm, maybe even early tomorrow morning. That timestamp at 2 a.m. still has 130 mile per hour winds that would still be of category four status. But going down into 120 miles per hour on Wednesday at 2 a.m., it's going to, going to undergo a very slow weakening trend as it starts to curve up to the north. Right now, Aaron is moving northwest at about 13 miles per hour. So we're going to look at Aaron to continue to change direction more northerly as we go throughout the next couple of days, but still maintain a pretty decent speed. 13 miles per hour doesn't seem like a lot, but it's pretty decent speed for a tropical system. That pressure is the most impressive thing that I see with Aaron right now. 933 millibars. We always talk about once you get below 1000 millibars is really where a tropical system starts to take its shape and take its form and intensify a little bit stronger. Well, 933 millibars that is well below 1000. So obviously giving you an idea of how strong Hurricane Aaron is. And right now it is located just to the north of Hispaniola off kind of the eastern side of the southern Bahamas right now. It did have some impacts in some of the Virgin Island areas. Puerto Rico resulted in some inland flooding, some pretty gusty winds, and it will continue to do that for some of these island nations down in the Caribbean. But it will make that northward turn kind of into no man's land between the eastern coast of the United States and over here off the eastern coast in Bermuda right there. But it doesn't look like it's going to have a direct impact in Bermuda necessarily. But let's play a couple more timestamps forward into the future where you will see not only will it maintain a northerly direction over the next couple of days, it will swing a little bit farther up into the north and the northeast. And this is going to take a very similar path to what some of our tropical systems have so far over the last couple of weeks. Uh, I believe the D name storm. I can't even remember what it was at this point because we've been talking about Aaron so much. This is going to have a very similar path to what that storm had. By the time we get to Friday at 3 a.m., 100 mile per hour winds and it will continue to weaken into a category one. And eventually, as it continues to move into these higher latitudes in the Atlantic Ocean, where the water is slightly cooler than it is farther down towards the south, it is going to continue to weaken into a tropical storm, then maybe a tropical depression, and then of course, hopefully just a remnant system and really break apart before it does continue its path up to the north and northeast where it could come into contact with maybe some of Western Europe. But this isn't the only system that we're keeping our eye on. We do have another area right behind Aaron, kind of in the same area that Aaron did form in that has been outlined for development. This is a system that we're probably going to be keeping a closer eye on. Obviously, the impacts from Aaron will be felt in the form of stronger rip currents and pretty high surf on the Atlantic coast of the United States. Some areas of the Outer Banks have actually even been evacuated just because those island areas of the coast of North Carolina don't necessarily shield anything in the way of tropical storm force winds, hurricane force winds, all those impacts that you see with the tropical system. The islands are kind of the last place you want to be. It is good for areas farther inland because they do kind of act as a blocking mechanism and maybe don't make the impacts as bad. But if you are kind of the first in the direct line of impact, obviously it's better to be safe than sorry. So that's why we have seen some evacuation orders for coastal areas of North Carolina. And I imagine Virginia and Maryland will probably follow suit 
as well, even though Hurricane Aaron isn't expected to make a direct landfall anywhere. But this area right behind Aaron, so it's going to go across a similar path. The first thing that you're noticing is a light brown color off the western coast of Africa. That's still that lingering Saharan dust. So that's been doing a really good job of inhibiting tropical formation up until this point of hurricane season so far. So that's why we don't see really good chances of development over the next two days. Still at 0%, but we have seen a steady uptick in this chance of developing past that two day window. So over the course of the next week, I think in the last 12 or so hours, we've seen this uptick from 30% all the way to 50%. So it does look increasingly likely that this tropical wave is going to get its act together once it moves into a more conducive environment, kind of right smack dab in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. You don't want any of this dust in the way that's going to inhibit the tropical formation like we we're talking about. So once it gets out of that dust cloud, it is going to run over that warm ocean water and we are going to see the conditions get a lot more suitable for formation for our next name storm, which does look pretty likely, but it's still about a 50 50 shot over the next seven days. I would put a good amount of stock in this being our next name storm, our sixth name storm of the year, but you can see that it's going to continue its western push and then this orange area is going a little bit south as of right now of the path that Aaron did take. So maybe impacting more of these island nations down in the Caribbean, getting into Puerto Rico, Hispaniola. But then after that, it's anyone's best guess about where the system is going to go. You can look at these extended forecasts. You can look at all the spaghetti plots and it can tell you that, oh, OK, this system going to get attacked together, going to really intensify. It could come straight through central Georgia. Well, it's anyone's guess. Once we get past seven days, we don't throw you anything in the forecast past then because obviously it is really just an estimated guess. Like you, you just don't really exactly know what's going to happen and we can't confidently tell you what's going to happen. So we don't want to go too far in the future and tell you one thing and then the exact opposite happen. Then that's where your forecasts definitely get a lot less and less confident. So if you're reading those 30 day forecasts looking for some temperatures, it's more than likely going to be wrong. So that's why we continue to just monitor it. What we have forecasted right now. So this area, this shaded area does get fairly close to us and it will be something we closely monitor. But who's to say that it doesn't take the exact same path as Aaron is. It starts to curve up to the north and then eventually to the northeast or it could go down towards the south. We'll have to really just keep a close eye on it and it's still not even definitive if this system is going to form into anything, even though the chances of development are kind of moderate, a little bit better than just some slim chances. But let's take a look at your list of names. We did cross off Aaron. Dexter was the fourth name storm. That's what I was trying to pick out. Like I said, when you start talking about these tropical systems a lot, some of the names start overlapping. You'll even catch some of us here on the weather team saying a wrong name storm for a storm that we've already covered for a new name storm. So just bear with us. The tropics are a very busy time for all weather teams across the country. So the next name is going to be Fernand. So I know it says Fernand and that's how it looks like it's pronounced, but the official pronunciation is going to be Fernand and we'll have that on the web story. You can kind of look at the pronunciation with that, but some of these names just are pronounced a little bit different than what they do look like on paper. That would be our six name storm of the hurricane season so far. Then after that, we'll go to Gabrielle and then I believe it's Umberto, Imelda and Jerry, Karen, all the way down the rest of the list until we reach the very end of hurricane season. But we are seeing this uptick in activity now, which is not atypical. It's the month of August. We start to see that uptick in activity once we get into August. Typically, late August, September, and early October are going to be your most active portions of the hurricane season. So we're kind of really just entering that window right now. We're really going to have to keep our eyes peeled for all these areas of development as they come off the coast of Africa, or they can very well form in the Caribbean and the Gulf, which we saw with systems like Helene and Milton last year. And that obviously is something a little more pressing. That's a lot closer to home, not going to take as much time to travel to us, but we want to give you all the information that you need. And right now we just want to keep you informed, but just because you see something and you see one individual model run doesn't mean that you need to run to the grocery store and buy milk and eggs. We'll let you know if it's something that you need to worry about. Right now, we don't have anything that is going to impact us tropical wise.